emulation being done on PC handhelds is usually significantly better than whatever Android based or Linux based handheld you can find. But that's primarily due to the fact that it's not necessarily designed to just do that. These handhelds are so much more powerful for the purposes of playing, you know, PC games. So it only makes sense that when it comes to emulation, yeah, of course they're going to be more powerful. But that water does get a little murky when you start looking at some of those Android based emulation handhelds that are climbing up there in price, they're coming with higher and higher tier specs and more memory, and eventually you're going to end up spending like $600 on a handheld from iNeo. Which don't get me wrong, they're really cool, beautiful, made with some of the best industrial design in the industry. But when you're spending $600 on a thing to play Super Mario World from the Super Nintendo, it is a little silly. You could take that $600 and get a base model Xbox Ally or a Legion Go S and not only be able to emulate all of the retro games you could possibly want, you could also emulate some more modern stuff like PS3, PS4, have significantly better and immediate releases for things like indie games, an easier time doing ROM hacks and cheats and whatnot in those classic games. Because on Android, to me, it's always been a freaking nightmare to do anything other than bum stock operation on any of these games unless you get a pre-modded ROM or something. But that does beg the question, what handheld would I consider actually one of the best options? Well, I decided to scour across the internet and I found three handhelds in three different directions that you may find particularly interesting. On top of that, they're all roughly the same price, that being around $350 to $450 on the used and new markets. Most of these handhelds are on sale frequently or being clear and stout at this point for some of the newer handhelds coming out this month. Starting off with the Steam Deck, by far one of the most popular solutions when it comes to emulation in PC gaming. Also, on top of that, it was originally one of the cheapest options. Particularly at launch, it was $350, but they have since deprecated that model and now start at $400, which still is an incredibly good deal, but not nearly as good as it used to be. The Steam Deck has its primary advantages with its Linux-based operating system. SteamOS is uniquely pretty decent, actually, at eliminating overhead and freeing up resources, particularly making emulation significantly easier with its more open operating system allowing for developers to make custom applications like EmuDeck that can completely overhaul your Steam Deck into an emulation powerhouse, auto-installing all of the emulators you could possibly need with a nice, easy-to-access access point in Steam or in their own front end. Now, EmuDeck has since been made available on a few other PC handhelds and just on Windows in general, but it originally got its start on the Steam Deck. And for me, with MU Deck achieves simply the best results on Steam Deck when comparing it to anything else I've ever used it on. It's a little bit of a mess, especially on Windows. Not to say it isn't good or anything, it's just not nearly as simple to use as it was on the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck itself has enough power to emulate pretty much all your major systems. PS3 is where you start to have some maybe issues but with the more advanced PS3 emulators, you should have a much better experience than I originally did when I initially set PS3 emulation up on my Steam Deck because at the time, I was using a very early build of the PS3 emulator I was using, so it wasn't nearly as optimized as later builds were, and I'm just too lazy to go back and do it because I did it for a video once and I never intended on really emulating PS3 again after that. Nintendo Switch emulation is something that I participated in for quite some time on my Steam Deck, especially between 2023 and 2024. I was just really resistant on buying literally any games on my Switch because it ran like horse crap most of the time, especially like Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I never owned on my Switch. I emulated it on my Steam Deck and it wasn't an amazing experience. I chop up most of that to the fact that that game even when emulated, still kind of looks like butt and runs like butt, but at least it ran like butt consistently on my Steam Deck rather than 
all over the place like it would on a Switch. And of course, PS2, GameCube, Wii, potentially Wii U, but I never personally tested that, but theoretically should be more than capable of being emulated on the Steam Deck. It is pretty much a jack of all trades, master of none kind of situation. It is incredibly simple and easy to use, but for that, it's not exactly perfect in every single way either. The next handheld is primarily here because I've seen it go for incredibly cheap, that being the original MSI Claw, AM1, I believe it was its model name. It's a bad name, but just the original black MSI Claw, essentially. And that one was pretty decent at launch, but it had its Intel driver issues and just wonky ass performance. But nowadays, it's actually pretty decent. And by this point though, it is a few years old and it's starting to get clearanced out. Sales are happening way more often and the used market is starting to fill up with these things quite a bit actually. And they're selling for pretty darn cheap. Like I said, anywhere between $350 to $450 for the highest in options. And I've even seen as recently as a sale going on, I forget it was at Best Buy or Amazon, but it was essentially an MSI Claw with the i5, so not the highest end one, but it was still pretty decent for gaming, a little bit higher than the Z1 non-extreme. And that was selling for about almost shy of $300. And for that, that's actually incredibly good. That's an amazing experience for just shy of 300 bucks. It is important to note that that sale has since ended and a sale that good probably won't be coming back around until Black Friday deals start happening again. So if you're interested in that kind of a deal, give it some time, literally a month, and you should have uh, the handheld of your dreams. Of course, the MSI Claw runs Windows, and for that, it's fine. If you install something like Handheld Companion, it does go a long way in making the overall experience significantly better, especially because the MSI Claw doesn't have touch pads like the Steam Deck does, so navigating Windows can be rather annoying. The primary reason why the Claw has ended up on the list at this point is because it's just one of the best deals I can find in gaming right now, especially if you can find it on sale or a particularly good deal on any of the many used sites out there. I know people in my comments have been talking about getting so many good deals lately on allies and claws because people are selling them off to get their brand new shiny barely better Xbox allies. Yeah, I got a video about that here soon, probably sometime early next month talking about how the, the new handhelds that are coming out changed the market. I anticipate not very much. I'll stop spoiling future videos at this point, but overall, the Claw is a fairly decent option. It is capable of the same level of emulation, though PS3 will have a little bit of a more struggle time here, but generally, PS3 emulation is pretty much hit and miss, so sometimes you'll have a game like Little Big Planet and it's running great, you know, it's a fantastic time but then you boot up like god of war or something and it's like oh my god you're gonna set your device on fire and if you do though go down this route it will be a significantly better overall experience than you would on the steam deck when it comes to raw performance especially when it comes to playing native pc games and indie games that would just generally be a better overall experience but it is still you know windows so that deters a lot of people for turning this into a dedicated emulation device. So I think the same thing will apply to our next handheld, the ROG Ally. I think this device is very good when it comes to emulation performance. It's fantastic. As I've stated before, it's pretty much gonna be capable of the same level of emulation as the Steam Deck and the Claw. You know, this thing is gonna be pretty much the same, but it's gonna come with its own caveats of it is still a Windows device, and it comes with its very fun Windows things, unless you go and install the full screen version of the Xbox app sort of stuff on the Xbox Insider site or whatever the hell that thing is called. It's fine, though I'm already starting to hear complaints roll in on the Xbox allies that people don't like it. Overall, though, 
The primary reason why the ally is here is that it's an alternative to the claw because functionally the two are very similar. They both run Windows. They both have control issues navigating Windows because of the lack of touchpad. So ins installing something like Handheld Companion will go a long way in making it better. But it should be more powerful than both of the previous devices mentioned. So PS3 should be even slightly better on it at the very least. One game in particular that I've heard isn't great still though is games like Red Dead Redemption. But that game is just already on PC. You could just buy it. You don't need to emulate it. Just it, the, the thing is actually there. Pretty much the only game that I ever actually emulate when it comes to PS3 is Demon Souls because I did not have a PS3 growing up. And so my only exposure to Demon Souls is watching videos, playing it, Vati Vidya videos and whatever the PS5 remake videos were because I didn't get a PS5 either. So I just really wanted to play Demon's Souls and so I just emulated it. But when it comes to games that are just already still available on PC, I have a much harder time justifying emulation to begin with. Because to me, emulation is the only solution when it comes to games that are simply unavailable in any function or form on a given platform or a way to purchase them on said platform. Or I already purchased said software and I wanna play it on a different device and then I just download the ROM offline because I, I'm too lazy to rip my own ROMs. Back to the Ally though. The Ally makes a strong case, especially for if you're doing a hybrid approach. If you're focusing on both emulation and PC gaming, so maybe like dual booting something like Botticera in Windows, which I think might be possible, could be something you want to try, or even trying just Hollow OS and turning the Ally into a pseudo Steam Deck or just installing straight Steam OS on it because you can do that now. So if you wanted the more powerful chip, but the accessibility of the Steam Deck, that is another approach you could take. But to me, the simplest and easy solution, who would have guessed, is just buy a Steam Deck for emulation. It is going to be the easiest one. While it might not be nearly as powerful as the other two options, it is still going to make a very solid case for itself for a dedicated emulation device. I would love to hear what you guys think though. Are you at all interested in buying a PC handheld for your emulation purposes? I would love to hear what you guys think about this down below don't forget to leave a like comment subscribe all of those social media which down below and if you want any of the devices we talked about in this video affiliate links will be down below if you click on those they'll go a long way in helping support the channel and last but not least have a wonderful day